Hey everybody, this is Perch, and um, I got a request to talk about Eclipse Comics or Eclipse Entertainment, and uh, you know there, there's some things to to tell here. Um, it's it's actually the comic company, the small publisher, has a longer life than people realize. Um, it it you know all in all, it, it created I, I mean a decent amount of titles. Um, I think I mean quite a lot of titles, more than you expect. Um, and I think in the hearts of a lot of people who are collecting comics, particularly in the eighties, Eclipse was one of those companies that, that, uh, that you remembered that, um, I, I mean, they had, they had a place in the industry. Um, and it, uh, so there's a couple things about them. Now I know that I'm going to do this video and a bunch of people are going to point out 8,000 other facts. So please just take that as a, this is a basic overview. Uh, to kind of get yourself into this stuff sounds cool. Hopefully I can hook you into some specific things about Eclipse and then you can go kind of check them out yourself and learn about those or we can go deeper over a particular subject. But, you know, right now in about 10 minutes, I'm going to try and explain who this company was. So the company started in the 70s. Um, it's a misnomer. I think people think that uh, the comic company actually started in the late 80s. I've seen that uh, passed around, but no, it was actually the, the late 70s. And um, the kind of the claim to fame here, and I... I've heard some people disagree with this, but I, I, I believe it is still factually true, um, is that Eclipse was one of the first comics, uh, they created one of the first comics to be sold through the direct market. Um, this is cool in the sense that it's, uh, you know, it would, it would be kind of one of the first steps to what would be the direct market. It's also a result of, I think, Eclipse just not having distribution uh, like others. And and I think the positive thing you could say here is that rather than let that stop them, they they pushed comics where they could, which was, um, you know, in, in comic shops, in the direct market. Uh, but the other, I think, far greater aspect of Eclipse is that um, it, it was one of the first, not the first, but one of the first uh, companies meaning not just something that is wholly owned by one individual, but actually a company with, with employees and a structure um, where they offered royalties and creator ownership. And the creator ownership was a pretty big deal because this was definitely not how the industry was working um, by and large. And it would be the basis, uh, I believe, although very few people give Eclipse credit for it, for a lot of what Image did and what other comics have done in terms of giving uh, creator ownership. Um, and, and being able to have a structure where that worked, where you could, you could publish comics um, almost like a publisher distributor, although the distributor is not really the right word, and, and basically have this, have this working. Um, so I, I think uh, that part's pretty cool, and they, they definitely deserve to be known. It's weird because Eclipse, um, when I see them come up, and even in, in more recent times, I see them, them talked about as uh, they started the direct market. I don't think that's really true. I think that's a weird way of looking at it. And what I see dismissed a lot is that they they did put some things in place that would become pretty positive for creators down the road. Um, they're also they were one of the companies to first get into trading cards. They did a lot of things very early and didn't see the benefit of it as the company did uh, basically end um, in the uh, in the early '90s. I think '93 or '94 uh, they came to an end, um, and then the company was actually purchased uh, or the IP, not the company, was purchased by Todd McFarlane in 96. And I don't think we've seen very much um, use of that IP, but maybe in the new Spawniverse, uh, we can have that. You know, what did they do? Well, they have a large number of comics. Um, you know, one of the things that they did uh, really early on, um, well, I mean, early on by our standards, in the late 80s, uh, they produced some James Bond comics because they got that license. And uh, they also would do I Am Legend. And they, there's, a, there's a couple of comics. They, they did actually quite a bit of, um, of little licensed, uh, properties. And again, this was before, uh, a lot of other people do, were, were doing more. Um, they, they handled Miracle Man, which is probably a, a definitely a, a comic of, of, of that to take note of, um, that they have. Um, they, they also published a handful of, um, kind of what I would call, um, not licensed works exactly. They did some index, some, uh, some, uh, encyclopedia type things for DC. Uh, they published a comic I love very much, which is Zot. Uh, they, they had a bunch of titles in here. And, and I think in general, uh, Saber, 
uh, Scout uh, went through them, the Spider. Um, there, there's, a, there's a handful of things there that I personally truly remember. I love their true crime stuff. I always thought that was that was really cool. But they, they published a lot. I, I guess what I'm trying to convey here is that they, they published I, I mean, hundreds of comics. <laughs> there, were, there were a lot of a lot of things that they did. I mean, they were in business for nearly um, over a decade. Um, th- this company was uh, basically it was kind of the the love of comics from two brothers. Uh, they would, uh, you know, they 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 basically had a, a deep fondness for comics. They wanted to bring back kind of that that indie feel. They wanted to do something for the creative company that allowed an option outside of Marvel and DC. Um, and in, in particular, uh, they they solicited some really strong talent. Um, the you know biggest of which is, as I mentioned, of course, Alan Moore with Miracle Man, but they also worked with Chuck Austin, Donna Barr, uh, Chuck Dixon, uh, James Hundall, Scott McCloud, Peter Milligan, Chris Ware. Um, they uh, Steve Englehart worked for them for a while. Gene Colan. There there were a lot of, of pretty huge names in there that did work. Um, they they also I mean they, again they 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 had a couple of big successes I think Miracle Man the Rocketeer Zot um, those those did very well for them uh, for the company and they definitely helped put them on the map but they were never able to quite break through um, for to be kind of considered one of the main indies they always kind of operated just under the radar where there was a lot of really cool stuff if again if you're reading comics in the eighties. But there, there was just something that prevented them. It was like they were always trapped under a ceiling that, that companies like Dark Horse and others would manage to get past. Um, I mentioned they tried to expand into trading cards, uh, which they did. And they had uh, some early success uh, with kind of uh, what I would call gimmicky trading cards. Uh, they did cards for the Kennedy assassination and kind of a, uh, I remember one that got them in some trouble with shops. They were doing card sets based on uh, serial killers and and organized crime, uh, kind of, uh, you know, like like highlighting uh, different famous names where that was concerned, which definitely got people upset. And then they did a, they did some kind of trading card set covering the AIDS epidemic that also really also um, did not help. I think it was one of those cases where I think the market was ready to accept cards like the idea, but then they picked topics that were guaranteed to just get people pissed off and and not uh, not actually make things happen. Um, there was it's it's worth noting as well. Um, they they were very very early on in working with some manga, and uh, there was the I think the Dirty Pair stuff. I believe they did uh, Area eighty eight uh, Mai, um, and they basically helped I think break down the door to get a lot of manga coming into the U S into the West. Uh, manga has a very bumpy road that a lot of people for they look at it now and they're like oh my goodness it's uh manga is doing great it's selling all over the place people forget that manga has crashed actually two separate times in the last 20 years where where north america is concerned it's probably by the way one of the reason why uh people inside the north american comic industry dismiss manga i think they're assuming it's going to crash again not sure it will this time because conditions very different but uh, manga has definitely had uh, some big bumps, and and uh, but they helped they helped get the ball rolling. I think getting manga to pierce the North American market was always going to be very tricky, and I I think if Eclipse had not helped along with Viz and a couple others, it would have it would have had a real hard time getting getting going. Um, but you know the the direct market uh, turning heavy specul. I mean the the thing about Eclipse is I think their titles were never aimed at at the speculator market. I think it was always going to be um, tricky for them. They were they were a core, you know, quote unquote, core comics company, and so they missed the they missed the boom of speculators. Now, and arguably, even if they'd hit it, they probably would have been shaken out a couple years later. But because they were missing kind of the big surge in the early '90s, um, that that hurt them. And then there was a, there was a contract they had with Harper Collins. That's probably worth noting uh, that that contract actually slowed them down and caused a lot of troubles uh, in in terms of what they were able to do there, and that that's worth noting because today, as we're looking at more licensing and kind of more expansion into other markets, I suspect some of these situations are going to repeat themselves. Um, I think a lot of where uh, IDW is at uh, probably mirrors some of where Eclipse was at, just just in structure. At any rate, um, uh, like I said, there, there are some really cool people that came into this. Uh, I mentioned names above. You know, Grant Morrison was there for a while. Mike Grell, 
um, some some really amazing people uh, wound up contributing to uh, to Eclipse, and it's one of those companies that a lot of people don't really know. It, it for whatever reason they just it it falls within a very narrow window of po- people's understanding of comics. But uh, Eclipse is one of those those companies that I think deserves dramatically more credit than they get for you know basically helping usher in. Uh, a lot of of what we take for granted today, and it uh, they you know they, history has has not you know not basically I don't know it, it's it's weird you just eclipse doesn't come up and yet so many foundational things we we have right now I think were started there or they help push and maybe it's because some of the people involved in terms of leadership uh, were they're not the the cool kids today they they always you know I I would argue. I don't know if this is a fair assessment or not, but they, they seem to treat uh, comics as a business rather than a social club. And I think as a result, uh, Mulaney, um, you know, it, the, 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 the brothers, they, they basically didn't are not given the credit today. But I definitely think Eclipse deserves a, a pretty strong place in the comic book hall of fame. If you want to check out more about them, uh, there's a lot of information. I definitely think if you want to say, I want to read something from Eclipse, you can go to their back catalog. It might be kind of hard to find some of this stuff, uh, but they add, you you guaranteed there's a comic that they have produced that you will like because they they were really had a wide breadth of genre uh, between superhero to crime to meta to romance to western. I mean they they had they had everything, and so you know it's it's worth checking out some some really good stuff there. Uh, but anyway, let me know your memories. Do you do a do you remember Eclipse? Uh, do you have a favorite from that line that you you really you know enjoy and and would love to read again? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, uh, and you know yeah, get in touch with me. The description of the video has all that contact information. Eclipse, it's a cool company. Go check it out. Thanks for listening.